Welcome to the Love Church Ministries Midweek Empowerment Service. Tonight's message comes from the series titled, Faith for the Finish. From our beloved pastor, Dr. James Eric Williams. Please join us in reciting our canopy of protection. Psalms 91 As we begin to start, I want to share a few things with you, and then I read our foundational text um, for where we're going. But yesterday, um, I had the awesome privilege, and I won't call their name just because I let them share their testimony. But yesterday, as always, whether it's a marriage, whether it's baptism, I had the awesome privilege of visiting, um, you know, the sick, um, all that. I love it as part of a pastor. I was sharing that with somebody. I got to go up and sit with Bula earlier this week, but I was able to, um, Pastor Gigi, go and do a house blessing. And what a house blessing is, two of our, our, our beautiful members, uh, of course, husband and wife, when I say two, husband and wife um, was able to buy a beautiful new home here in Hawaii. And as I was driving over there, the Lord said this to me. He asked me this question. How were they able to, he told me to ask him this question. How were they able to buy a house in the midst of a pandemic and a famine with everything going on? And, and, you know, it's like God asked me that question. He already knew the answer. So when I went in there, we was talking and praying and just had a marvelous time. You know, I proposed that question to them when I was driving to their house on um, what God said. And we both came out of the green. Um, I mean, um, just excited because what we said and the only thing we could say was this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in his eyes. And, and I think I want somebody to say God is still faithful. COVID, COVID was shaking this in the White House. Racism cannot stop the faithfulness of God. Somebody need to hear me. God is still faithful. What we got to do and what I'm going to teach tonight is to pray something that one of the prophets asked God to do um, for one of his servants. This is my prayer for you all tonight. And so if you see the title, Pastor Gigi, it's Faith for the Finish. And what God said to me, watch this, it ain't finished yet. So we got to make sure we still got faith for the finish, meaning, watch this now, we don't want to lose our faith with what's going on in the world. And right now, God said this to me. He said, son, I want you to preach this message because it looks like people are focusing on what it looks like. My God, people are focusing on what it looks like. 
People are focusing on what it looks like and our eyes can get us in trouble. God is still God. And so if you focus on what it looks like, I know for a fact you're not operating in faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so what God told me to tell you was he need to get your faith back focus because you need your faith focus for the finish. It's, a, it, it, it's not done yet. We still got work to do and we cannot allow what's going on in the White House, um, what's going on in the outhouse, um, what's going on. We have to walk by faith. Now, listen, now, I mean this. If we believers, you got to get this. If you're not a believer, then you don't have faith in God anyway. And so hopefully if you're not a believer, I can minister this word to you where the Holy Spirit will bring a conviction to you and let you realize that you need to have faith in God. Watch this now as Mark's gospel, chapter 11, verse 22 starts out. Jesus said, have faith in God. We've been taught well with that. That presupposes they must didn't have faith in God, because if I already got faith, then why would Jesus have to tell him to? So Mark eleven twenty two 22, before he starts the pericope of um, the um, principle of faith, the person of our faith, the principle of our faith, the prayer of faith, and the problem of our faith. We know it, but listen, we got to make sure our faith. Now, listen to me. God put this on my heart, and I'm going to say this. Please don't get mad at me. Somebody type, don't get mad at pastor, because some are legit. But God showed me right now is people just moving our feelings and emotions. If you didn't see that post I posted, whether you blocked it or didn't want to see it, I would encourage you to go back and read it. Because, I mean, I know true end time prophets even came up on that message and say, this is a confirming word, Pastor. I just preached this. This is the word of God. And what God is saying, people looking at the cost of light bread. Listen, if you're a God robber, it don't matter whether you're in Connecticut, Texas, um, wherever. If you're a God robber, you, you're going to take that curse with you because you're robbing God. And so don't just leave Hawaii because you see everybody else moving and your girlfriend here, your boyfriend here and you want to look at how much it costs to get some little Debbie's out of Walmart and you move out of the will of God. Somebody said it this way. You will leave the house of bread for a piece of bread. And we know we see that in scripture. Don't don't sell your birthright. So so God told me to tell you now this again. Don't say pastor speak prophetically when it comes to checks and stuff and not turn me off. I ain't hearing you. God said what people are doing now. Everybody looking at people moving and stuff. So everybody it's like getting on a bandwagon. Well, I'm going to move too. maybe we can do better in this place. Maybe we can do better in that place. And I just came to give you one. And I'm just telling you what the Lord said. Listen, as a pastor, I don't try to hold nobody back. My prayer, even when people tell me they stand in Hawaii and people on here that have stayed, they know this. I said, make sure God told you that because it ain't my job to take care of you. If God told you to stay. God is the one that will take care of you. I know the cost of living here, but that's a slap in God's face to look at how much bread and milk and uh, Little Debbie's cost in Walmart and the mainland and think you're going to have it going on out of the will of God. No, uh, God just told me there's some people hiding you, robbing God. And so because you're robbing God, you have brought a curse to yourself and you think you can go somewhere else and have it going on because you're your sister there, your, your girlfriend or your brother. And now you're seeing all this moving with COVID, people losing faith. And now you jumping on the bandwagon and now you move. And I hate to say this, I'm saying up front. I've had a couple of people move and they've emailed me and told me, Pastor, we shouldn't have never left. It was out of the will. But listen, you go your own way, you got to pay your own fare. And then don't say I'm your spiritual father, but I can't give you spiritual advice. Come on, somebody don't. Somebody said don't sign on now. We some a spiritual mother, spiritual father. But when it comes to spiritual things, because you know I'm going to tell you the truth, sometimes people don't even ask. They just go and do it. And I'm telling you, I'm just trying to, I ain't trying to hold nobody back. If God is telling you to leave Hawaii, leave California, leave Texas, leave wherever, then you obey God. But don't be a bandwagon jumper just because you see other people leaving. If you see everybody running and moving off a ditch, are you going to jump and dump, jump the ditch too? No, it may be a season for them. Hear me now. I'm telling you, don't cut me off now. When it's checks in the mail, you're all ears. Don't move out of the will of God. God can provide for you and take care of you in Hawaii, which is the highest cost of living last time I checked, versus you going anywhere else. Because if you're a God robber, 
whatever the cheapest place in the world is, if you're a God robber, then wherever you go, you're still going to have that curse up on you because you're robbing God. So you can go anywhere where you think is cheaper. I know a whole lot of people don't live in Hawaii struggling. Somebody ought to talk back to you. Let me just get this up front. I said, I know a whole lot of people that don't live in Hawaii, but yet they're still struggling because it's not where you at. It's not location. It's foundation. Why well, need somebody to hashtag that? It's not location. It's foundation. And a lot of people move by feelings and emotions. Oh, this is the, I think this is the best place for me. Oh, I think this is that, that not because of COVID. We may be in Hawaii too long and we're looking for places to move and not even seeking God. You better stay unmovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. If God has called you here, he will sustain you here. We've been here going on 12 years. If I need to get, pull a wolf out the bag. If we've been here 12 years, almost 12 years, I'm a country boy from America, Georgia, grew up broke and poor. Hey, Mother Copeland, my, my giant, giant in the faith, spiritual grandmother. Gigi is an old country girl from South Cacalacri. Um, Amen. Praise the Lord. But God called us over here when my wife was paralyzed in a wheelchair. God said, I'm sending you to Hawaii. A lot of y'all know I'm telling the truth. My wife was in a wheelchair. Uh, pray, bless you, Pastor Wood. Let me say this because right now, I'll, see, we got to have faith for the finish. And I'm not a preacher that tickle your ear. If I tell you something, you need to trust God said it. And when we came over here, I couldn't see nothing. All I was trying to do was get my wife out of a wheelchair. My wife is sick. God said, no, when you in my place, you take care of my business, I take care of yours. And people know I'm not lying. The doctors looked at Gigi brain tumor. They looked at her cancer and they said, it's nothing we can do. And God says nothing they can do, but it's something I can do. And out of faithfulness, man, I'm from Georgia. And the last thing was on my plate was Hawaii. Gigi from South Carolina, man, we wanted to move to Texas. I just wanted to go and be a deacon at Christian House of Prayer. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm saying I just want to be a doorkeeper. Just get me to Bishop Holcomb and Pastor Val. I sit down on the door. People know I ain't messing with it. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, just send me to Texas. So that's where we always thought we was going to go. Twelve years later, hear me, Pastor Dominic Woods, sir, because I'm going to share more with you because you have 12 years later, almost 12 years later, Mother Copeland, you've been instrumental in our life. You know I'm not lying. We never, since we've been here, never missed a bill and never missed a meal. Why? Because God is faithful. And when you in his will, he will pay the bill. Don't come up to me now and changing your confession. And No, no, no. You just moving out of the will of God because you on the bandwagon or seeing other people do it. You better stay grounded. You better not leave the house of bread for a piece of bread because the house of bread, bread continues to flow. A piece of bread, once you eat it, is gone. And so I want to challenge you. And that's all it is of faith. I'm still in my text. Because if you don't have the faith, if COVID, if, if uncertainty is making you uh, change your confession and move out of the will of God, you will never ground in any way. And I want to declare and prophesy to somebody on here that you're dealing with a sickness. Listen, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctor tell you. Did you just hear what this preacher said? And people know, not just cancer, but brain tumors as well. Paralyzed in a wheelchair. We roll up in Hawaii. I'm pushing my wife, smiling. I'm pushing her around in a wheelchair. I'm trying not to get discouraged. I'm praising God in a wheelchair. God, even though, even if you don't do it, God, I had a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego spirit up on me. God, I want to see her walk again. But God, is this my lot? If I got to take care of my wife and bathe her and push her in a wheelchair, then I do it. But God had another plan. Somebody ought to hear me. Somebody right now, you looking at COVID, and I was supposed to get that job, but because of COVID, I didn't get that job. And this is going on, and that is going on. And what I want to do tonight is just what God said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. God is faithful to his word. And when the doctor said it was nothing that they could do, my wife supernaturally got up out of that wheelchair. And listen, I declare, not only was she walking again, she started running. And this is what God told me. I do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask for that. See, I'm going to bust the devil head to the white meat. I'm not just going to make her walk again. I'm going to let her run because Satan thought he stripped her. Satan thought he had her when he had her in the wheelchair. But watch this. It's some faithfulness that come with that. When my wife was in a wheelchair with cancer, you didn't hear my name out there in the street running around with women and stuff. I'm not beating nobody up because none of us are perfect. But boy, when you're living right, hallelujah, when you're living holy, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. See, I'm trying to get your faith back where I said, don't you put your faith on a white house. 
Don't you put, don't you, some people think um, next week is going to change some things. No, it's still going to be hell in the White House. It's still going to be division in the White House. It's still going to be Republicans against Democrats. It's still going to be lying and schemes going on in the White House. You better not put your faith in the White House. You better not put your faith in Capitol Hill. I'm declaring tonight that you lift up your eyes into the hills from whence your help coming. Your help come from the Lord. That's Psalms 121. People are debate. People are waiting on next week to think next week going to change something. We're going to be in more hell after next week. And don't even talk about January. God said, I'm looking for some people now that will move by faith because faith is not what it looks like. Let me show y'all something real quick because do y'all hear me? Watch this. I got a camera. Of course, I'm in my beautiful office. I got my lights. I got my podcast. I got my speakers and everything. That way y'all can hear me and see me good. But I want to move some. God just move some on my heart. Y'all see this rag in my hand? Watch this. What I did, I just covered up the camera. But I'm still talking. I said, I just covered up the camera. I did it on purpose. So y'all can't see me, right? But just because you can't see me, that don't mean I ain't here. See, it's the spiritual world. It's a world that you can't see, but it don't mean it's here. And what this world is more predicated on. See, in the, see, it's amazing 2020 and told people, look, because everybody, I'm not beating it up, but everybody came out talking about this, the year vision. And God said, that's a worldly thing, 2020. That's just, and I'm not saying everybody made that up. Please don't hear what I'm not saying, because I know some pastors here from God. But God said, don't you get no mantra dealing with no vision. He said, our mantra, element, I see somebody type it. What is our mantra? Our mantra is everything is going my way because I'm obeying what he said. He said, this is the year of obedience. Let me say something again. See, we get caught up in what we see. That's the natural world. But it's a world even more real. It's a realm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's a realm even more real than the natural realm. What has happened? We've been born in this world. We've lived our life in this world. So we're used to this world. But the apostle Paul let us know something. Somebody help me. In Romans chapter 12, he says, be not conformed to this world. That word conform in the Greek is suskitsmatizo. It means, Pastor Gigi, don't be shaped. Don't let this world ball you into the image of this world. I declare years ago, when I got a revelation after I got my visitation from the Lord, I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. Let me show this again for somebody in the back. Watch this. I'm still talking. But yet I got the camera covered up. So just because you can't see me, see now because y'all can't see me, the focus even more on your hearing. Did I say this, Pastor DJ? They says when a sight, when one thing go out, it amplifies something else. And what God is telling us, we need to walk by faith. And faith is based off of more hearing than seeing because you can't see it, but yet you still heard me talking. It's a ram that's talking to you. It's a kingdom that's talking to you. It's a God that's talking to you. And even though you can't see it, don't be moved by the world. It's just as real. If I can cover myself up and you still know I'm here, you still hear me talking, it's the same with God. Now I need to see it. I need to see it. No, you don't need to see it. You need to focus on hearing because when sight is gone, they say hearing is elevated. And what we need to do tonight, we need to elevate our hearing more. Hallelujah. Because God is speaking. I can confirm that. God is speaking. He's still guiding, but we can't look at it with our natural eyes. We can't look at it with our natural eyes. Let me show y'all something. Turn to the book of Romans chapter chapter one, man. I, turn to the book of Romans. I, I know I ain't going to get close to finishing, but let me, let me give you some stuff because I'm going to encourage you. I mean that. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Don't be moved by what it looks like. Don't be moved by what it looks like. That's why look at Romans chapter one, please. Romans chapter one, uh, verse 17. Romans chapter one, verse 17. Look at your name and say, you all right? Look at your name and say, you all right? I want to show y'all something. Romans chapter one, verse 17. This is what it says. This is important. This is my final. This is where I want to start off. It says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed, it, meaning it's revelation. For in it, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed high, from faith to faith. Meaning, watch this. When we end faith, we should never come out of faith. It don't say faith to fear. It don't say faith to doubt, to, to fear, back to uh, faith. Whatever we end, when we come out of that trial of faith, that child of faith, somebody need to hear me, is designed to strengthen your faith. So watch this. Remember I was telling y'all um, about Gigi healing? So isn't it amazing? Um, 
so many people, and I'm not saying this to make a fish bigger, y'all on here until you know, people get healed. And isn't it amazing? We done had at least five women that the doctors have solidified and qualified that is barren. And God, of course, is his power, but because of our faith, we've been able to lay hands on their stomach and speak into their life, and they got kids now. Even Fred and Camilla Avery, they, they told me, can you reverse what, what y'all prayed over? Because they got children. I ain't going to mess with my son and daughter, but good Lord, I may have to pray for them to stop now. Why? But listen, here's the revelation. God is the God of overflow. He said, okay, Satan, you wanted to have them barren? Just like he did with Hannah. Study out. Hannah had Samuel. And, 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 and Hannah was good with that. But God said, no, 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 no. You said you were going to dedicate him back to me. Read and look how many children Hannah had. We don't hear a lot about them because Samuel is the first child. Samuel is, but Hannah had more children than their Samuel. Why? Because God is the God of the overflow. He likes to come back and do exceedingly abundantly. So watch this. He's as it is written, the just, those that have received Jesus, those that are justified by faith, he said, the just shall, not maybe, not might, not, ah, oh, God, I know, but no, the just shall live by faith. This is a lifestyle for us. We live by faith. We're not moved by what it looks like. He says, the just, Pastor Williams, I'm going to need you to live by faith. And I have been doing it. Even when God told me what he was going to do when I was in Iraq, I've seen somebody better hear me. I've seen God by faith. How many people on here realized and knew my wife was paralyzed? How many people can not? God is awesome. And people wondering why my, my faith is so high. It's not a cockiness. It's the faith in God. God is awesome. He's the God that sits high and look low. And there's nothing too hard for him. And so the just shall live by faith. You that are just, don't allow what's going on in this world not to make you lose faith. No, you got to, you got to walk it out now. Now listen, that's Romans chapter 1, verse 17. The Bible says two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So I want to give you a witness. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Quickly, it says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Well, let's look at what Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 says. Y'all all right? Watch this now. Now the just shall live by faith. There we go again. But look, this is what I want to highlight. He says, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. If anyone, meaning the just shall live by faith. But if you draw back, if you pull back from your faith, if you start, if you start operating in doubt, he says, now my soul has no pleasure in them. Now the just should live by faith. But if anyone draws back, there it is. Somebody said, I ain't drawing back. Listen, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. Don't draw back. Don't give up on God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Look what the um, amplified version says. Now, I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Watch this. It says, but my righteous one, the one justified by faith. See, that's that's how we made righteous. You hear some people say, I'm just a filthy rag or I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm not here because I ain't got time to deal with it. But which one are you? See, we can get so religious. I'm a sinner saved by grace. No, that's that's foolishness. Oh, you're a sinner or are you saved by grace? And so watch this. When we say we're righteous, that we're not saying we're right in our own sin. We've been made right. Even the Bible says that by Abraham, it was imputed unto him as righteous. Or, or it was credited unto him as right. Just I believe in Jesus. He said you've been made right. So by, but my righteous one, who? The one justified by faith shall live by faith respect this man relationship to God and trust in him. And if he draws back, look what it says. I like to amplify it. Shrinking in fear. God said, once you start operating in faith, the same faith you got saved by, won't you live by that faith? Because the only way we get saved is by faith. And so it's amazing. We can get saved by faith, thanking God and forgave all our sins. Somebody need to hear me. And we're going to have a mansion in heaven one day. It takes more faith to believe that than some of the things on the earth. 
And people say they save by faith and they believe they're going to heaven and spend eternity in heaven, hanging in heaven, street paved in gold, and you got a mansion. People talk about it all the time, but yet you can't believe God for a piece of bread and milk. Come on, somebody talk back to me. Come on. And so the same faith that we got saved by is the same faith what he's saying. The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter one, verse 17. The just shall live by faith. Notice he didn't say maybe. Matt, no, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. All I'm trying to get y'all to do, those that have received Jesus Christ, you got to live by faith. Now, why is that important? Because faith always deals with what you can't see. Faith always deal with what you can't see. Now, let me show you something. I'm going to move quickly, so y'all stay with me. I'm definitely going to put the scriptures back. Y'all can go look at it in your devotion time, but I need to get somewhere before I close. But I want you to see something um, in Romans chapter 12. Let's, let's begin this process because um, God was showing me faith can be thrown around so much. You hear people say, oh, that's a faith preacher. And, and people can start downsizing faith. When God himself said in his word, in Hebrews gospel chapter 11, verse 6, I quote it for you, scribes, you can put it up, I don't have it in my notes, but Hebrew 11, 6 says, watch this now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And yet people still down, um, um, I'm not saying everybody, but people make, make lower faith. Like faith doesn't matter. When did, when did faith stop? For the New Testament believer, that's all we operate in. I just read it to you, the just shall live by faith. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. So without faith, no matter what else you do, you cannot please God. Look what Romans chapter 12, verse 3 said, because I need to start to begin to establish something for you. So you'll know that what Jesus said, Satan is not only a liar, he's the father of all lies. So you can't let Satan tell you you don't have the faith. No, you do have the faith. And then the faith that you have, you need to increase it or exercise your faith. Somebody right? You need to increase and exercise your faith. You need to increase and exercise your faith. Look what Romans chapter 12, verse 3 said. I just started at a point. We know it starts off on um, verse 1 and 2, where Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that then he says, not to think more hollow yourself than y'all, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. This is actually the King James Version. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I let you know that. Uh, each man, every man has been dealt the measure the measure means not a man, it meaning everybody was dealt the same measure of faith. You say, what is that measure? That's important because that word measure um, um, deals with metro measure. You you see it all the time. God said, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure. God is a God of measure. So when he says here, um, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. This is what I tell you. The measure, I want somebody to write this, is enough. See, whatever, see, it's not caught up in what the measure is. What Was it, uh, you know, a cup? How, no, the measure, you just need to know the measure is enough. And this is what the measure is enough to do. God had to give everybody a measure of faith. You know why? Because he can't have them have an excuse. How we say by faith. So watch this. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. That's that measure. Everybody got a measure of faith to get saved and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. So when he says each man has been dealt the measure of faith, then God, he gave everybody a measure of faith because that's what we get saved by. So nobody can come and say the reason I didn't get saved, God, I, I didn't have the faith. Now, we all got faith. Um, people done got on an airplane before. People get on carnival rides that don't know God or nothing, but they got faith. But now the question becomes, who's your faith in? So we know us that are justified, our faith is in Jesus. But he gives everybody faith because when that time comes, when they hear the word or whatever, and that brings them to salvation, they, he, they got the measure of faith. Now he said, man, y'all understand that. So because everybody has the measure of faith, then now that I'm saved by faith, he says, we got to live by faith. Now I want to take you to another scripture that I want to park here for the rest of the 15 minutes or so I got 
because this is what we need to understand now in this world. This is the scripture that we need. Here it is right here. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven, which happens to be um, our first lady, Pastor Gigi, favorite scripture or one of her favorite scriptures. For we walk by faith. Now, here it is, because you ask some people sometime, and I learned this. I didn't know it at first, so I'm not going to take credit for it. But, you know, once we get it, we, we run with it. Um, but he said, we walk by faith, not by sight. This is the scripture that give us revelation. The opposite of faith, you know, we, we've been thinking the opposite of faith is fear. But no, watch this now. And God developed this even more for me later. Somebody, what, what they used to say, man, if somebody milked the cow and now I, I, I just ran with it. I got the cow now. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And this is why it's not faith is the opposite of fear. Because watch this. Fear don't come until after we see. Fear comes from what we see. See, if I don't see then I'm, I'm not fearing. So when he said we walk by faith and not by sight, what gets us in trouble is our eyes. And so in doing this time of um, election, during this time of COVID, see, if we're, if we're operating with our eyes, then that's going to cause us to walk in fear. Somebody help me. That's going to cause us to not believe God. That'll even cause us to rob God and pull back in our service to God, whatever it is, because we're not walking by faith. We're not walking by faith. We're walking by sight. And he tells us, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 um, in the um, Living Bible. Look at it in the Living Bible. Look what it says. We know these things are true by believing, not by seeing. Let me say that again. Um, the Living Bible says, same scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we know these things are true by believing, not by seeing. And that's just what I wanted to say here. And we're going to see something later. Let me, let me make this statement then. Do you know you are blessed? And please, somebody hit this. Do you know you're blessed when you believe before you see it? And let me say that again. Do you know you're blessed? That, that's, that's a form of what God said. We walk in blessing. We're blessed when we operate in believing it before we see it. Now, I need to say something to y'all. What does the world say? The world say, I believe it when I see it. But what happens here, we know these things are true by believing. I ain't got to see it. I believe it, not just seeing it. But see, if I'm operating in, oh, I got to see it first, then you're not operating in faith, which is not pleasing to God. Can I hear you say amen? Let me show you something in the book of John, in the book of John. Hallelujah. Look at this, because I just made a statement. Now, I ain't got time to backtrack, but when Jesus first showed up to the disciples, Thomas wasn't there. And, you know, Thomas wasn't in church. I don't know what Thomas was. And so they said, so they said, we, we seen the Lord. And Thomas said, uh, I don't believe that. Thomas said, watch this. I believe it when I see it. And Thomas went even for this in your Bible. He said, when I can touch him, when I, Thomas, I be, then Jesus shows up to Thomas and look what he says. After God, after Jesus showed up and said, no, he, I heard you. Even though I heard you. He says, come and touch me in my side. Come. And Thomas said, oh, my Lord and my God. Jesus comes back in verse 29, and to me, he makes a profound statement. Are y'all hearing me? Are you hearing me? Listen, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Remember what we just read? Blessed are those, blessed. I just told you you're blessed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. God told me to tell you when I was studying this scripture in particular, I want y'all to see this again. Remember I covered up the camera? Listen to me. Blessed are those that don't see the job, yet you still believe it's yours. Blessed are those that don't see. Listen, right now is the time. It, it, we, we, it's a lot of stuff you can't see. It's, it's so much uncertainty. But where the blood bought believers that say, I still believe. Somebody just type, I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. Because God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. And God is saying, who is it that I can find that still believe me? I know it's a lot going on. I know it's a lot of uncertainty. And our eyes right now can get us in trouble. But where the blessed people at, 
that says, watch this now, I don't have to see it, but yet I still believe. I said, where the blessed people at? Now, look, I'm not talking about the bootleg people. I'm talking about the blessed people right now. That's another B for another time. I'm, t- I'm not talking about bootlegs. I'm talking about those that are truly in the kingdom and say, I can't see it. What the song say, we love to sing it, but I know you're still working. I remember one time God told me he works uh, underneath the surface and behind the scenes. He went, because you won't always see it underneath the surface. You don't see what he's doing. And then all of a sudden they spring up. He works, um, uh, watch this, behind the scene. You don't always see what's going on behind the scene. And then the curtains open and then you see it. And what God is saying, hallelujah, I'm going to do something. I'm still working. I'm still working. You still got to believe God for your promotion, even when you don't see it. You still got to believe G- God for your spouse. You still got to believe Jesus for your way with kids. Whatever it is, I want it to come and encourage you. Don't be moved by what it looks like. Because Satan's job, especially in this season, is to get people to disbelieve God. You stop operating in faith and watch it. You find anybody, help me now, that's not operating in faith. Most of the time, they're operating in feelings and emotion. When people begin to just make decisions without even seeking God. See, they don't stop believing. Now, ain't even no use of me praying on and asking God. And they make decisions. And what God just came by to have me encourage you. What God had just came by to have me remind you. He's still a God that sits high and look low. And if he did it for James and Gigi, he'll do it for you. He's still a healer. Hallelujah. You can look at the MRI, but when you look at it, I acknowledge what you're showing me on that MRI. But I know of God, hallelujah, that specializes in divine healing. Isn't it in wonder? I said this before. Watch this, Pastor Dominique. I said this before. When Jesus, now he didn't tell everybody, but everybody that he healed or everybody came to him, Watch this now. He came back. The one that he did, he came back and said, your faith has made you whole. Your faith. This is the revelation that God showed me. He never said anything else made them whole. Whenever somebody came to him and he came back and said, what did he say has made you whole? The woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5. What did he come back and say has made her whole? Blind Bonamaeus in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 46. When he cried out to Jesus, Jesus came back and said, your faith has made you whole. In Matthew chapter 8, when the centurion came to Jesus, Jesus said, I go to your house. He said, no, you ain't got to go to my house. All you got to do is speak. What did he come back and compliment his faith? When the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, came to Jesus and said, my daughter is demonized. Jesus said, um, um, the dogs got to eat from the crumb. She, what did he come back and say, your faith? This is the point I'm trying to make. He never said anything outside of your your faith has did it. He didn't come back and tell people somebody going to shop now. He didn't come back and say your education has did it. He didn't come back and say the amount of money you got. Everybody that he dealt with, that he came back and gave them their report. I like to say, when he showed, when they came, he came back, he always said your faith did it. He never, it's nowhere in scripture where he said something else did it. And what I wanted to come by and tell you, this is why God got this bald head preacher right back on faith, because there's nothing else going to do it. He didn't never say your feelings and emotion. And let me give you a qualifier on that. Somebody need to hear me. The woman with the issue of blood, I would say, man, you would think, you know, I feel sorry for her because watch this. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible tells us that she had went to all the doctors and not only was she still sick. This is what the Bible says. Read it in your devotion time. Pastor Gigi, it said she had got worse in her sickness and now she done lost all her money. Think about it. But it wasn't until she activated her faith. And and that's why I say God don't deal in feelings and emotion. He hear you cry. He do. Don't hear what I'm not saying. He hear you cry. But he said, I'm saying when you're going to operate in faith. It was a man that was a paralytic. It was a man um, um, had the, the palsy. And he couldn't do nothing for himself. And his four friends got him. It's in your Bible. You better get you around some faith filled friends. Hallelujah. I'm talking about faith for the finish. It was a man that was on a stretcher and the, and the palsy had him. He couldn't walk. And they tried to get into Jesus, but they said they couldn't get in because of the crowd. Them men is in your Bible. They climbed up on the roof. Boy, somebody good God Almighty, you need some roof climbing friends. Don't give up on me when I'm in my struggle. When my faith is weak, that's why your pastor came by here tonight. When my faith is weak, God, I need to be yoked up with somebody that can carry me. Hallelujah. Did y'all hear that? When my faith is weak, when I'm 
struggling. I need some friends that's got faith to finish. That man with the sick of the palsy, he was laying there. He couldn't move. His faith was done. His faith was dead. They tried to get him in. I could see uh, Pastor Wood, Pastor Gigi, I could see if they tried to get him in. And they said, man, we tried to get you to Jesus, but it was just too many people. But don't you like friends that got faith to finish? They went higher. They said, no, man, we got to get our friend in. And the Bible said they went up to the roof. It's in your Bible. I, I said this. How did they get up on the roof? Hallelujah. And they opened up the roof and began to let the man down to Jesus. It's in your Bible. And Jesus looked up and it said when he saw their faith. It's in your Bible. When he saw what? When he saw their faith. Not their money. Not their education. Not their skin color. Not whether they were Republican. Not whether they were Democrat. When he saw their faith. It's people more concerned about their political title than whether they got faith or not. Somebody ought to hear what I'm saying. God is looking at your faith right now, Monasia. God is looking at your faith right now. We got to get our faith back because without it, it's impossible to please God. Isn't it any wonder what was attacked from Peter? Jesus says Satan's desire is to have you. His desire is to sift you at we. What did God pray for? What did Jesus pray for? But I have prayed. Here it is. It's in your Bible. This is Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. I have prayed that your faith fell night. This is my prayer tonight that no matter what it looks like, no matter how many layoffs they get, no matter how many business closed, no matter how COVID still trying to ramp people and kill people, and people on ventilator, no matter how bad cancer still is, with all this technology and all this money invested in cancer, it's still the number one killer. Hallelujah. But I came to declare to you, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, release your faith and trust God. I don't care how high cost of living Hawaii get. If God has told you this what to be, release your faith tonight. My shake in the both side. Ila la Monday. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over every demonic force that's playing with your mind and trying to get you to disbelieve God. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over every demonic force that's lying to you and playing with your mind. You get your faith back. You trust God. You keep cracking the whip and speaking with authority. Don't you waver. Don't you give in. You keep being faithful to God. I don't care how much they call you a holy roller. I don't care how much they tell you this and that. No, don't you move out of the will of God. Man of God, you stand fast. Man of God, you stand fast and lead your family. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Woman of God, you support that man of God. Don't give up on him. If he's walking by faith and not by sight, don't be moved by what it looks like. He may not have a job now, but late in the midnight hour, we serve a God that can turn him around. It's going to work in your favor. I'm tired of the devil bamboozling God's people. We got to get back to walking by faith. I don't care what it looks like. They can put Harry Potter in the White House. It don't matter because my faith ain't in who's the White House anyway. My faith is who's the one that sits on the throne, the one that sits high and looks low, the one that's a very present help and trouble. The one who was and is and is to come. The one is the blind and morning star. He is the great I am. He is the prince of peace. And as he told Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The resurrection is not just something, it's someone. And I want you to get your faith back in Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the one that can move on your behalf and make a way where there is no way. Don't you give up on God. Slap yourself three times and say, what was I thinking about? God is still good. God is still good. COVID hadn't changed who God is. He's a God that cannot change and he's a God that cannot lie. I don't care what it looks like you put your trust in God because I'm telling you, I've been there before. They told me in Mosul, Iraq, they said, Pastor, you need to come home. Your white bones sticking out. My wife had lost so much weight. And, and, and by the time I got back, I was in Mosul, Iraq. My wife was in Korea. And when I got back, she was. She was so frail. I, I mean, I could barely touch her. And if I hug her, it would hurt her. And she was pressing through. But boy, I got a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. That my grace is sufficient for thee. For in GG weakness, my power is made perfect. I'm telling you right now, hallelujah. The word of God is quick and powerful 
sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even dividing the son of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the intents of the heart. God is not going to let you down. God cannot fail you. You know, you, they used to sing the song, he never failed me yet. This just how God deal with me. Uh, don't nobody get mad at me, but my, I was grieved by that, and God said, yeah, you don't like that. Why? Because they said he never failed me yet. Yet presupposes that you can fail. No, and I know he never failed me yet. He won't fail you. He won't leave you. For the Bible says he would never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. I came now to pull you out of the pit. Don't you get in the pit of discouragement. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, there's no um, witch, no warlock, no weapon, no fortune teller, no no, no um, horoscope, no, no fortune cookie that can do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I know Halloween coming up, but we put witches and warlocks on notice. Hallelujah. You have no power. Hallelujah. And Jesus said we are the light of the world. You need to release your faith. You need to release your faith. You need to release your faith. Let me share something with you because because I know I ain't going to get to where I want to go. But, but I want to share this with you. I was in Paris. I was in Paris. And I was blessed um, for my wife's 50th birthday. She wanted to go to Paris. And we, we, we went to Paris. And so um, the last day we was in Paris, we were flying out um, that night. So so I got up around 12 or something. I said, you know what? Let me go and get a couple of uh, souvenirs. Are y'all with me? Elder Langley, that's what I said. Elder Tracy, daughter, that's what I said. Monasia, daughter, that's what I said. I said, let me go get a couple of souvenirs. So, so I, had, I had a $100 bill. That was my limit. I said, I'm going to take this $100 bill. Go convert it to their money, I think in euros, and then I said, I'm going to buy some. So I went to the place, Mother Copeland, I went to the first place. Um, uh, Sister Stephanie, I went to the first place, and I handed them, now this is a $1 bill, I didn't want to be on here with no $100 bill. And I handed them the $100 bill, and they went through their little calculation, and they said, okay, we'll give you 70, I think it was 76 euros or something. And anybody know me know I shop at Ross. I'm like, no, you 76, that just didn't sound right. Good Lord, what kind of rate is that? So I got my $100 bill back. I went down the street, a couple of more places. I went in there. I said, y'all want to change this $100 bill? They did their calculation. Boom, boom, boom. Are y'all with me? And they came back, and I think he, he had got up to 82. I said, no, that just didn't sit right with me. I said, no, give me a $100 bill. Now. I walked out. Now I'm getting frustrated. I went down the street a little bit more, and I stopped at one more place. And I gave him a $100 bill. I said, uh, how much will I convert on this? He did a little calculation, and I think he would buy 82. I said, it's, it's changing three places. I said, no, they're trying to pull an older bill coming. I just keep my $100 bill, and I take some pictures. That'll be the souvenir. Listen, this is the point I want to make. Get back. We fly back to Hawaii. I'm meditating, preparing for a message. And the Lord spoke to me. I would not lie. And this is why I want to close to encourage you. The Lord said, remember when you was in Paris and you was trying to exchange that hundred dollar bill? I said, yes, Lord. He said, let me explain something to you. He said, the way the world system works. Listen, now, this is this is um Thailand money. So this is Thai bot. And so I, I don't know what this worth, man. This probably worth a nickel or something. I don't know. I just got it. this is this is Gigi money. This is Korean money, Freddie. Like, this is this is the one. I think it's like almost like a dollar. Anyway, anyway, I'm trying to make a point. God said to me, are y'all hearing me? God said to me, in the world system, when you had that hundred dollars, the reason you got frustrated, that's how the world system worked. But God is up and down. You, you'll never get the value. Now, watch this now. In essence, what Paris was saying, watch this, Sergeant Major, watch this, uh, uh, Deaconess Robinson, what, what Paris was saying, your money is, it is not as valuable in Paris as it is in the United States. But somebody need to hear me. And what, what, that's why currency exchange, because what, what one location is saying, your money ain't as valuable. And so what God, I said, God, what, what are you trying to tell me? He said, son, that's why you need to be in the kingdom. See, the Bible said we in this world, but we're not of it. I'm going to free somebody. Because see, somebody, don't get mad at me. See, you mad at God, but you're still living in the world. And so, so that exchange ain't adding up because the world system is always down, uh, designed to just give you enough or not enough. I said the world system is designed to just give you enough or not enough. Watch this. Why do they give you minimum wage? Why can't it be maximum wage? Minimum. Why? It's, it's, and, and most don't even give you the minimum wage. And so what God showed me, the world system, that's why now, listen to me. Well, please, somebody hear me. That's why it doesn't matter who get voted in um, next week. 
And the world system is still unstable. The world system is still up and down. I, I have a hundred dollar bill, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Y'all know me. I shop at Ross. You ain't gonna give me at least a hundred back. That's just the way I think. But they said no. That hundred dollar bill ain't worth it. That so I went to three different places. I said no. But this is what I want to tell y'all as I close. I think this is a good place to close because I want to stay encouraging you. This is what God told me. He said, "In the kingdom, this how it works." He says, you bring me like I brought that hundred. Are y'all ready for this? Somebody, somebody. He said, in the kingdom, you bring me your faith. I exchange your faith for whatever you need. Good God Almighty. He said, in the kingdom. Think about that. What did I just tell y'all? The woman, you know I'm preaching this right because the woman had lost all her money. So what was her exchange for her healing from her? What was her exchange? What was her? Listen, what was her exchange, Pastor Woods, from her blood issue? She brought her faith. Well, how, what's the what's the going rate for, for healing somebody that's blind? Somebody help. I know y'all smart on here. Blind Bonamess was blind. Uh, what, what, what's the what's the rate on that? Listen, you can spend millions and billions of dollars and that optometrist and all them other eye doctors will tell you ain't nothing we can do. But blind bottom males begin to shout out to God and release his faith. And what God told me to tell you before I get off of here, God ain't looking for your money. That's why I got to throw this plug in. I'm just going to be honest with you. I can't stand people that always tell out the church want their money. And God wants your money. God, man, God, that money don't mean nothing to God. You don't know what God wants to do from you being a tither. You don't know what's going on with your children and your marriage. And God sees something in the future where you need a healing at. You can't put no price tag on that. And people rob God for 10% and get mad at folks and start lying on pastors and churches because they stinking, thinking, and stingy, stinking, and they don't want to give God nothing. And God said, all I want is your faith. And so I want to encourage you. It's not your education. God then said, bring me your degree and show it to me. Bring me your transcript and I'll give it to you. God said you wasn't going to never get the right amount that you needed for that $100. But he said, tell my people if they bring me their faith. Anybody on here can testify. Elders Tracy, hallelujah. You didn't have no amount of money that could heal you from from breast cancer. It is anybody on here. You didn't have an amount of money where God saved your uh, marriage. You didn't have any amount of money where God restored your business. You didn't have any right of money where you clothed them in your right mind now. You didn't have any amount of money that you were trying to have children and you couldn't have children. What God said, bring me your faith and whatever you need. Let me go through it. Watch this. Blind Bartimaeus, he needed sight. The woman with the issue of blood had a blood issue. The centurion man, he came to Jesus and it wasn't even for him. It was one of his servants. The, Syro, the Syrophoenician woman, she came to Jesus. It wasn't even for her. It was for her daughter. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? The, par the paralegal man that was on, it was for other friends. that were. All I'm saying is throughout the Bible, you see people came broken. Women, listen, women supposed to be an outcast. They don't even supposed to be in the presence of Jesus. Blind men. People, people, people that were sick, they were outcasts. You ain't even supposed to be. But yet God allowed them to come to him with their faith. Boy, somebody hearing this, I know people don't push you back because you may have grew up poor. You ain't got this. You ain't got the big house. You ain't got a car this. And God is saying, in my kingdom, I don't look at none of that. All I need you to do is get your faith back for the finish. All I need you to do is get your faith fired back up. And God said, once you get your faith back, fired back up, you come to me with your faith and I do an exchange. And, and, and this is the last point I want to make. God said, when I brought that hundred dollars to them, I wasn't going to never going to get an even exchange. He said, I went to three. He said, you could have went to 30. It, it was gonna, they, they always going to give me less. That's just their rate. That's how they was going to do. But this is what God told me. Somebody need to hear this. When we bring our faith, he always gives us more. It's in the world system. I'm trying to get exchange for a hundred dollars. And I think the highs they went was 82. It's just, it wasn't going to be an even exchange. God said in the kingdom, it's not an even exchange, but it's on his side. In essence, he said, you can't afford to get healed from blindness. It's, it's no amount of money, but I'm going to give you more. You, that issue of blood that you've been struggling with for 12 years, that cost you to lose all your money because you was going to everybody else. Now it's the exchange. I'm going to heal that blood for your faith. 
that door that home that's that's that that door that home that the woman came the canaanite woman and said she demonized i'm gonna heal her exchange for your faith people you don't know what your faith will do you don't know how your faith will move you into the very presence of hot god and things no amount of money can buy god can do it for you by your faith i said by faith i'm gonna be dealing with this because it is a book in the Bible. Don't tell me I'm preaching. In, in Hebrews 11, where we started, not faith, it's a substance thing, hope for. It's a litany of people that it says by faith or through faith. How were they able to do what they do? It's in your Bible. We call it the Faith Hall of Fame, whatever you want to call it. How are they in that book? Not by their education, not by their smarts, not by, not they were able to know, not by, it says by faith. It's in your Bible, by faith. Eli, uh, Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Moses. It's even a prostitute in the Hall of Fame. Y'all better hear me. See, folks will limit you because in their in their world, you need to be educated. You need to look a certain way. You need to dress a certain way. You need to have this amount of money. But I'm talking to somebody. But Rahab, who was a prostitute, is in the Hall Hall of Faith. By faith, Rahab. You better read it. God said, "I'm looking for your faith." When everybody else counts you out because you ain't got this and you ain't got that. I'm looking. God said, I'm looking to see who got faith. And we need faith for this finish because things are going to get worse before they get better, but not for the believer. Hey, God bless you. I want to pray with you now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think that's a good place to close, to encourage you. I'm going to show you how to increase your faith. I'm going to show we're going to go through this. Your faith has to be on trial to increase. It's like a test. And when you take a test in school, when you pass that test, you go on to the next grade. Well, when he said we go from faith to faith, you can tell when God is ready to elevate you because your faith get tested. And we get we think it's something strange, but your faith is getting text because God is getting ready to take you to another level of faith. And you need faith to sustain you where God is taking you. Hey, God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then the, the way we release our faith. It's for salvation. I read it to you early, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. If you're on here, if you're going to watch this later and you don't know Jesus Christ and something, faith comes by hearing by where the Holy Spirit with the word and they come together, as Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And then in John chapter 3, verse 5, he said, except a man be born of water and spirit. That word water, that is symbolic of the word. And so while the word, word is being preached, the Holy Spirit begins to move. And then we're like, what's that feeling? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to us and saying, yeah, that's God talking to you. And if you're watching this and you sit and have an ear to hear what the spirit has said, God is telling you you're not saved and you need to be saved. And so if you want to obey him, I want to make sure I give you a prayer to pray for you and know that you're saved. It's the simplicity of the gospel. So if you're watching this now or you want to watch this later, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you confessing I am a sinner and I need a savior. God, I realize and now I know you died for my sins. I denounce the kingdom of darkness. I denounce Satan. And God, I thank you for forgiving me for every sin I've ever committed. But now, God, I ask you as I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the son of God. I invite you in right now, Jesus, right now in this very moment. I invite you in by faith as not only my savior, but as my Lord. For where you rule, I will reign. God, I will sit, submit and not quit. I just ask you to lead me to a Bible teaching church and give me a pastor after your own heart that can continually feed me with knowledge and understanding. Help me in this Christian walk. And I look forward to walking by faith and not by sight in Jesus name. My brother, my sister, I promise you, if you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are saved. And now it's just a matter of you walking it out by faith. I'm telling you, someone received this word. You can write this down prophetically. You're going to see people that, that, um, not saying not all of our faith can increase. I don't care where you're at. It stinks in the nostrils of God if somebody was on here tonight and said, ah, I already got faith. No, all of us need to increase. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and then they came back and said, Lord, increase our faith. And so if they're walking with Jesus and ask him to increase our faith, how much do we more need to increase our faith when we don't physically see him or walk with him? And so I want to encourage you that all of those that receive this, and you, you're going to let this launch you into a deeper level of faith. You're getting your faith back. You were operating in fear and doubt. 
And, I, and I'm, I'm saying many. I, I just I know what I felt studying this and what God said. And there's some people that you're operating in fear and doubt about to give up. That's not to beat you up. Now you're going to get back in. Now your faith has been released. Because why? Faith come by hearing. And you're going to see supernatural things. And I promise you, it's people going to be able to come up. They're going to email and give us testimonies of what God has done in their life.